When that beat drops, y'all know it's time for one thing and one thing only. The weekend. Welcome to the weekend. Nick, yes, sir. Nick Karski and Zensky with you here. Getting ready for what's to be another eventful weekend for everybody in the history of ever with Halloween getting closer and closer with Zensky getting ready to travel to the magical world of Walt Disney World, getting ready to see Mickey and his friends. Oh, it's going to be a blast for you, I'm sure. Well, at the time that people are actually listening to this, I will be in Disney World and we're still a couple days out from that at the time of recording, but... Uh, yeah, it, it, you just set the the bar pretty high for this weekend. Boy, everybody should have a good weekend. That's that's Every- our job. That's why we're here to make sure everybody has a good start to their weekend. That is right. Yes, bring in bring in the good energy, the good vibes. Starting your Friday afternoon, evening the right way. That is what you could count on to the weekend for. So, do you remember at one point last show we had a conversation? During our headlines from this par- well, from those uh, from that past week, um, about a new creation that Duncan had come up with. Yes, I believe we were talking about the ghost, the spicy ghost pepper donut. And yeah. if memory serves me correctly, where we left off was you were going to swing by your local Duncan and pick one of those up. And I'm assuming you have one. Got the ghost. Th- that no. the classic pink and orange Duncan bag. Look at that. No, no, don't tell anybody. What? What did you I, do? But I got the goods. You got the goods. Yeah, that's what you texted me. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I, I got the and goods. If you want to see it and be a part of it, well, we're going to do that for you right here, right now. No, I, I don't know if I'm eager to try it. Disappointed that I'm about or about to try it. <laughs> Uh, kind of confused about this whole ghost pepper infused donut, but there's a lot of feelings that are going on that I'm t- internally trying to decipher through right now. Well, you weren't even too worried about it last show. You were like, it can't really be that spicy because they're selling this as a product that the average right. person could buy. Right. right. You're not like signing a waiver and saying, here, I'm going to let myself eat this ridiculously <laughs> spicy thing like you right. would have to do for just about any sort of crazy taste t- uh, challenge and, and test. Sure. So so you, you got the goods. You, you just got bought one, right? No, actually, I just got a bag, to be honest. That's all I got. <laughs> I just got a bag. Uh, this is just for free promotion for Dunkin'. Yes, I do have one single donut. And the person at Dunkin' probably thought I was a lunatic for <laughs> getting one thing and one thing only. <laughs> and that was a spicy ghost pepper donut that I'm going to hold Ooh. up for everybody to see who are, uh, who's watching on, on YouTube right now. If you're listening right now, it's basically a normal donut that's got what looks to be a strawberry icing on top of it. Um, I believe it's a strawberry icing that's infused with cayenne and ghost pepper um flavoring and then there's some pink sprinkles on it like <laughs> granulated sprinkles on it yeah and is the donut is like a cake donut or more of like a dough like one of like the, the glazed dough donuts i haven't eaten this thing i don't know <laughs> come on why do you not remember no, it, our history it, it, that we have with donuts it seems yeah it seems like this is a glazed donut okay. like a normal yeast donut okay i'm just trying to get a better understanding of the consistency that we're talking here well i mean this thing was probably made at six in the morning and it's right. you know well and past- because i was too much of a wimp to go out and get one myself so oh, would you be a wimp to do this thing i'm not a, i'm not a i'm not a fan of spicy food so i would probably <sighs> pass on neither that. am i well i mean i used to <laughs> but, be so you'll naturally be the guinea pig though should i just dive into it yeah i think you need to do all right i'll, I'll, I'll so here we go mr karski the inaugural bite of the spicy ghost pepper donut from dunkin donuts Lord go for it all right man <laughs> all right that's a, that's a decent that wasn't a wimp bite dude that was a decent size bite okay he's chewing puzzled look on his face now a look of almost concern and regret figuring out what is going on in his mouth processing processing still 
Looks like he's going to speak. Well, because I'm tasting strawberry and not. Oh, wow. There's the kicker. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All I was tasting was strawberry and nothing else. I'm like, what is until, this? Until the kicker. Yeah. Oh, wow. This does have a little bit of heat to it. Like, okay. What kind of heat are we talking though? He's, oh, he's going for another one. Okay. I'm trying to decipher this thing. Right. Yeah. Hmm. It's not awful. It's not my. Chew favorite. a little closer to the microphone so we could hear every noise. ASMR. <laughs> yeah. Right. Donut style. Oh wow, that does have a bit of a kick to it. That's very bizarre. So okay. So it sounds like if I'm just reading your reaction, it's not overwhelming by any means. Um, if you're somebody, I would say it's got like a mild to medium chicken wing kick. That's what I would say. A mild to medium chicken wing kick, believe it or not. Like it's actually got more of a spice to it than I thought it would. No kidding. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. But then again, I'm, I've become a softie in my old age here, <laughs> 30 plus years old of being able to handle spicy foods and hot foods. When we would used to go to Buffalo Wild Wings in Ithaca, what would you get? What was your what was your flavor of choice? Just like medium. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I would get that too. Yeah. Okay. So it, so if it's like a, if it's equitable to the uh medium on the Buffalo <sighs> Wild Wings scale, then I'm, I could probably do that. But now it looks like you're struggling a little no, bit. No, I'm just I I'm just very confused because I feel like a strawberry icing shouldn't be spicy so my yeah. body is just like what is happening here my mouth it's playing is just, mind games with you it really is playing mind games with me it's mind bleeping the hell out of me yeah okay overall if i had to rate it one to ten four point two it's oddly specific but Okay. Four point two, and I think part of it might be the fact that this was probably made at seven a.m. and it's now seven o'clock at night. So, if if you were to venture a guess and say if you got a freshly baked ghost pepper donut, how many points would that add? Maybe it'd go up to a six point four. Okay, so your average quality donut. Wow! After you take a sip of coffee, you can taste <laughs> more of the pepper flavor. Really? You're just having a whole. Wow. Flavor profile experience right wow. now. Wow. Now I'm tasting a little bit of pepper. I mean, not to say that I wasn't tasting pepper and heat when right. we first had it, but okay. Overall, it's it's not terrible. It's not the greatest thing in the world. It's very confusing if you try it, I think. Okay. Well, good to know. And that is your to the weekend taste test of the <laughs> ghost pepper donut from Dunkin' Donuts. Good. Should we get to headlines? Yeah. Here's what you missed. What did we miss this week? Um, well, the Sanderson sisters are back. Yippee. <laughs> this mother bleeper doesn't care about Hocus Pocus, does he? Okay, so... Well, we'll get to, to your story in just a little bit. We got to get okay. to the important news. I digress. Bette Midler, Sarah Jessica Parker, and Kathy Najimy have basically sparked a Hocus Pocus Pocus hysteria with a reunion pick. They're all in front of a blue screen, I believe, or a green screen. I can't remember the photo. I've got the photo right here somewhere. A blue screen, thank you. They're all in front of a blue screen. Bette Midler on her Instagram posts, In search of the Sanderson sisters is the best thing to happen to hashtag Halloween since Hocus Pocus plus Reese's Pieces. This put people into a frenzy because everybody's like, what does this mean? This is a cult classic sort of film, Hocus Pocus. Everybody loves it. Um, At one point, it was reported that Disney was going to make a a sequel. Well, this is apparently all for an annual fundraiser that Bette Midler puts on every year called, and I might be saying this wrong, Halloween, which is benefiting her nonprofit uh, New York Restoration Project, which works to restore gardens and parks in uh, New York's five boroughs. So a nice cause awesome. for her. So, yeah. Um, but apparently there's a, a whole takeover by the Sanderson sisters that's supposed to be happening for this year's event. But this basically sparked so much wonder and questions from so many different people about what this means. Right. Because there are a lot of people 
who embrace this movie like it's no other this time of the year. It's very much a cult following, yeah. And I, I, I had a similar question, like looking over this, like is it going to be because it's now out on Disney Plus? So are they doing like uh, a promotion for that? Are they doing hype for a sequel? But yeah. the Reese's Pieces thing is uh, actually uh, intriguing as well. But here's the thing. I said that a lot of people were excited by this, and you clearly acted like you were not excited by this. Do explain yourself, sir. Well, I haven't seen the movie, so I think that's a big part of it. How have you never actually seen this movie once in your life? There are a lot of movies that, like, I talk to Jenna about this all the time. Like, she'll say, do you want to watch this? Like, oh, yeah, I've never seen it. She'll be like, What? Like she, she's a big fan of like a lot all the Adam Sandler movies. So when she said like, "Why you've never seen like Big Daddy?" or she was she was like, "I don't shocked, know if it's a good so. example, but yes, Big Daddy is a classic. But <laughs> some right. Adam Sandler movies are very forgettable. Or, or yes, or, or, or quite the dud. But uh, so 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 same thing here. It's uh, I I don't know. I just I guess I missed it growing up. I was only three when it came out, but that's not to say I couldn't have seen it growing up. Um, and then she actually watched it this last weekend, and I was just busy doing other stuff and just chose not to watch it. So, Do you have I any idea I'm, what the concept of the movie is? Halloween. <laughs> That's about it. You look disgusted. God almighty, of course I look disgusted. I mean, the fact that so, you've uh, never seen this movie a day in your life, and it came out in the early 90s. I feel like every child of the 90s has seen this movie. At least once before. I th- I might be putting a bad name to 90s kids. I might be doing that. What other movies have you not seen that would make people just go, wait, what? Because there's a lot of oh, classic God. movies I haven't seen that a lot of people judge me about. I don't. I mean, that's... Uh, I, I, I let, let me answer that the next show because I'm sure I could ask Jenna and, and she'll be able to rattle off a few. I don't know if I can name any off the top of my head except maybe for some of those few Adam Sandler movies like Big Daddy and... Um, you know, I saw Mr. Deeds, but that was like an older Adam Sandler movie. But your, I don't know. Your, your goal before you leave for Walt Disney World and spending time in the magical God. world of Disney is oh, here we to go. go watch Hocus Pocus. All right. I will, between packing and regular work and other stuff, I will make a, uh, an effort to do so. It's on every single day. Or maybe day. I'll watch it on the plane. It's it's on every single day. I don't know what's keeping you. And it's on Disney Plus, too. <laughs> yes, it is. Um, so NASA and Nokia are teaming together for a very puzzling project, at least I think. Okay. Because there's so many times in my life where I'm out and about, want to use my phone. I find myself not being able to because I don't have any cell service. It's very frustrating when that happens. When you're just out and about and you can't send a message along to anybody. So, Nokia and NASA are teaming up to give the moon a 4G network. Whereas sometimes, on God's green earth, I can't get myself a network to send a message out to people. And we just talked last week about how 5G is this new fanfare in the world of, of cell phones and, and telephones, right? Yeah. So here's here's my question. If they're just only bringing 4G to the moon, but 5G is now in existence on Earth, why can't you just bring 5G to the moon? You got to start that, small, Andy B. Is that just overkill? You've got to start small. Okay. Um, apparently, there's a couple of other innovations that are going to, uh, going to excuse me, um, make its way to the moon. Power generation, robotics, measures for sa- or, uh, safer landings, and 4G. I'm not sure saying robotics making its way to the moon is like that big of a groundbreaking thing because there ha- there were robotics on the moon when we actually went to the moon. Is this our way of trying to find a way to live on the moon? <laughs> oh, absolutely it is. Or at least keep people there for an extended period of time. I think 2020 really kicked this initiative in the butt of trying to get anybody off of planet Earth that was willing to do so. <laughs> but it's just the concept of it just seems so stupid. Like, hey, yeah. I'm an astronaut. Look it, I'm going to take a selfie to prove that I'm up here. 
No, but in, in NASA's defense, it has been on their radar for quite a while because, I mean, if you think about it, I haven't been to the moon since late 60s. There might have been some missions in the early 70s, so the better part of 50 years now. Yeah. Um, I, you know, it's kind of the natural next step to get them back there. And, and both NASA, Boeing, SpaceX, like all these big uh, players in, in this industry are... Um, working together to try to get some system in place to get, eventually get us back to the moon. So it's it's it's. I'm not actually surprised to see this, but it'll be interesting to see where it ends out. It just it doesn't make any sense. It's it's a that, waste of money. It's a waste of time. It's a waste of everything. On the bright side, there's going to be great cell service on the moon because right. there's nothing that's going to get in the way of it. There's right, going to be no trees. There's going to be no yeah. like big metal buildings or signals that are going to get in the way. No, it's going to be great service up there. And we'll see how long. What, what does that charge you for a long distance? <laughs> right. <laughs> Next headline from the week. I'm, I'm very happy about this one. I must say. What do we so, got? So we, we both know our... Uh, communities of disappointed disgruntled sports fans you being part of the bills you know mafia your entire life and me weeks. being and me being a Mets fan uh, so uh, and I've been vocal about this that I'm not a fan of the current ownership of the Mets so uh, when I saw this today I was very happy that the MLB uh, ownership committee uh, su- reportedly approved Steve Cohen who is a uh, hedge fund banker uh, for his purchase of the New York Mets up to the tune of about two and a half billion dollars. So yeah. Yeah. he, if you don't know, is a lifelong Mets fan. He definitely has the team's um, well-being and quality and performance at heart, something that Will Pond's never had, in my opinion. So I'm very happy to see this ownership changing hands, at least to, to his uh, ownership of 95%. So they're still going to have 5%, but he's going to be the decision maker from now on. And it was not a banner season by any stretch of the imagination, albeit no. a 60-game season for the New York Mets, and it makes me wonder what what the future holds for this group uh, and for this franchise. Uh, you know, let's face it, you've got a general manager who is a player agent in BVW, right. Brody Van Wagenen. Um, yep. What what does the future hold for him? What does the future hold for a lot of these other guys as well? I mean, you still have the arms for the most part who have done a nice job. You've got Thor who's going to have to come back from injury. And the TJ that he's dealing with. Um, I, don't, I, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's one of those things where I think Mets fans are really, really excited about the future and what this guy is potentially going to build and make those big deals to to bring in the big free agents and bring in the the big arms or the big players via trade. But, I mean, I, I feel like Mets fans should be cautiously optimistic That's, about things. And, I, and, and that is really where my head is at, I think, because I just know that whenever the team comes out with an announcement of like, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. Like, we're going to shake this up. Like it's, I forget it was two or three seasons ago. They had, they were just so injury prone and they said, we're going to completely redo our training staff from the ground up. They were still plagued by injuries the following season. So I think that all goes back to if it's, you know, time and time again, you know, the buck stops with the ownership, right? So they, uh, I think it's going to be very telling of any of the recent changes since the Wilpons have been owners to, uh, see where the team nets out and I think bringing Sandy Alderson back is going to be a big part of it as well because you yeah. asked how you know what's BBW's uh, you know stance going to be now in the organization he's now going to be reporting directly to the guy who he replaced so. if he's going to be there at all Right, if he does, if he's not forced out. So um, I was never a huge fan of him. I, mean, I gave him a shot coming in, but I don't think he impressed myself or a lot of Mets fans for that regard. So let him go back to his agent life, and hopefully, it does some good for the organization. Well, and and I'm really curious for for things. I want to say locally here, but what does this mean for the minor league baseball clubs? Um, because mm-hmm. they, of course, have the Syracuse Mets. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, they actually own the Syracuse Mets. They recently did that deal here um, when they changed affiliations up in Syracuse from the Washington Nationals uh, yeah. to the the New York Mets. Uh, what does the future hold for the Binghamton Rumble Ponies right here in our own backyard, at least for me? 
um, because there are discussions that they very well could be one of those minor league teams that are a casualty when things are all said and done. Um, yeah. Just just really, really curious how they're going to handle a lot of this. Can I also ask, how do you get from the Binghamton Mets to the Binghamton Rumble Ponies? Because it's minor league baseball and it's a brilliant <laughs> marketing move. <laughs> Meanwhile, you've got the Syracuse Mets. Like, what's memorable about that? You've got absolutely nothing memorable about that. And we've talked about this a few times on my show in the past. Like, you've got the Binghamton Rumble Ponies, okay? When they wanted to rebrand, refresh, redo this, that, and the other, they were like, you know what, fans? You come up with some of the names for us. We'll narrow it down. We'll do a fan vote. <laughs> everybody decides okay and it was a couple of different ones i don't remember off the top of my head that doesn't matter that's a conversation for another day but at the very least that's what minor league baseball is the most ridiculous names in the history of ever are associated with those ball clubs and i just don't understand why the syracuse mets don't take advantage of that (laughs) and change their names to like the syracuse salt potatoes you know it's a gimmick that they do every other friday or something like that just just stick with it and roll with it baby yeah, I mean that's you bring up a great point. I mean, like you, you, there's not a lot of normally named baseball teams. You have the Brooklyn Cyclones, you, you know the Rumble Ponies. To your point, yeah, I mean, what, what is that? What it would be for Syracuse? It would be the. I would think it'd be the Salt Potatoes, right? Because that's or what the, the, that's what they went with, and that's what they've gone with uh, a few times on like some special occasions, and they've had a Salt Potato that's holding the bat and looking like he's an angry <laughs> mother bleeper. And or the Syracuse uh, dinosaur barbecues, or something like, right? What they should go with is the Syracuse orange. They yeah, already taken though. It's a joke. It's a bit. That's I that's know. what we call a bit. So that's but, but, my. I mean, it's it's not a bad idea. It is their color, one of their colors. But it, I mean, there you is, can't go already... with the Syracuse orange. It's already Zensky. What the, the, the hell are you the, talking the, the, the about? Prof- the professional Zir- Syracuse orange. Get the hell out of here with that. What? Is Is Syracuse University going to care? Yes, absolutely they're going to care. That's their bread and butter, and that's their brand. Of course they're going to care. Not that they have anything going for them to begin with. I mean, jeepers creepers. What is – so you you do do some some coverage of Syracuse, right? Or or is that out of your – No, we have Syracuse basketball, which is not usually that good anymore, and we have Syracuse football, which has been god-awful as of uh, the last few uh, few years. Yeah, and I, uh, so I was going to ask, like, what has, how has that the season been different than years past? Uh, agnostic of the the team's actual performance, you're, you don't have live crowds, you don't have, you know, I'm sure you have testing in place, hopefully for the players. Like, what has it been like reporting on this kind of stuff? Well, here's the thing: the uh, the dome in Syracuse was completely renovated and completely redone, and nobody has a chance to enjoy it. So that's are you awesome. kidding oh, me? Yeah, it's a plan that was in the works for a while. They were going to open it up in 2020, and guess what happens? A pandemic happens. That's no, amazing. Uh, Syracuse football pl- is playing. Well, they were going to play an ACC only schedule plus one non conference game, and they lost to Liberty. Of all schools to lose oh. to last week, Liberty. Okay, wow. yeah, it was really, really bad. It was pitiful. Um, and then the basketball team. There's not really much known about what's going to happen with the basketball season in terms of uh, an NCAA wide um, schedule. You know, who knows what's yeah. going to happen? I'm assuming it's going to be a conference only schedule. I mean, you're talking about the Big Five. They're going to still want to play and get as many games in. Somebody at one point recommended that there's a a, an NCAA basketball tournament. And this was also supported by some coaches, if I'm not mistaken, and some officials by, uh, I may have been the ACC. They wanted a basketball tournament that featured every single college basketball team in Division I hoops to play each other. So instead of a, a field of 68, you start with a field of 364 or whatever it is. Okay. Makes no sense. No, no, that is, how do you logistically pull that together? I don't know, but you go watch Cornell and Bucknell to see who advances to the NCAA tournament second round. Right. Let's go right. Yeah, right. So speaking of Cornell, we were talking about this before the show started. I think one of the things that we're going to try to do more in the show is like... Nick, Nick and I, have, we, we, have, we have a lot of similarities, but we also have some differences. You like Hocus Pocus, I do not. Um, things like that. So, okay. I, again, so I think what we're going to try to roll out here is for us to each have hot takes on things that 
I might like, but Nick doesn't like. And and so here's the example that we're going to start rolling with, I think. So you are admittedly a fan of The Simpsons, Mm -hmm. right? I'm admittedly a fan of The Office. We haven't seen those opposite shows. So you've never seen The Office. I've never seen... I mean, I've seen Simpsons episodes, but not the entirety it's, of the 30 seasons. The Office or, or, is a terrible so. show. The Simpsons is a classic 30 plus Okay, years. well, so the, the exact reason why we're going to be doing this. So I, as we go through to the weekend here, we're going to start to watch these episodes. And on the show, we'll just provide a hot take from what we've seen. We'll, con- we'll try to make our way through it. You'll watch a couple episodes. I'll watch a couple episodes. And then we'll no. reconvene the following week. And we'll see what we think. I can already tell you what I'm going to think, okay? Okay, but you need this is only going to work, sir. Look, look, no. If you here, go into it unbiased. Here, I've got no I've got no no bias whatsoever. I'm just going to say Pam screwed Jim over, okay? Oh god. That's what it boils down to. Pam yeah. screwed Jim over. That's the end of the story. That's all that matters. People don't look at it that way for some reason they don't look at it that way. That's the way it should be looked at. Pam screwed Jim over. And you know what? In fact, I don't even know Pam and Jim's last names. And I know they get married at some point, but at one point I know that Pam screws <laughs> Jim over. And it's a big F you to Jim. And I don't know why he decides to take her back. So that's what I'm going to say. See, I already got this thing in the bag. Because he is her soulmate, and she is his soulmate, and he did screw, and she did screw him over, and in the season two finale, and for part of season three, but they do make it to getting married and and having ch- children and living happily ever after what at a, a, and where their life takes them at the end of the show. It is your it is your fantasy love story all wrapped up in a wonderfully produced comedy. Oh, I like reality. So you like The Simpsons? That's why. That's why I watch 90 Day Fiance. <laughs> oh, that's why I God. like reality. Come on. What, what happened? Oh, God. If, and if you're listening, you should have just seen my reaction. You watch 90 Day Fiance? Now, look, here's the thing. At first, I was one to judge about it. Really, really hard. Into this? Really, really hardcore judging, okay? Yeah. My, my then girlfriend at the time, who is now my fiance, but she was my girlfriend at the time. Oh, good Lord. <laughs> had to watch it and i'm like what is this this bs this is this is this is terrible i don't want to watch it this is so stupid guess what it's hilariously awful tv and i love every second of it (laughs) i'm so so in with all of these lunatic people who want to get married in 90 days (laughs) to somebody they barely know from a completely different part of this world and it's glorious seeing all of it just escalate into or i should say um you know just completely uh yeah maybe you know what escalate into i don't know why i said escalate i've got spiral out of control yeah you know everything's spiraling out of control right now yeah and 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 so i'll give you that i'll, I'll say that you know a lot of people do find a level of humor in it because at, at, at its core i mean those aren't reality shows they're comedy shows right um, if you were to ask me. So I think, you know, if, if you find entertainment in it, and I know like that's why all these keep popping up on the air is because people watch it, the the ratings get back to the network, and yeah. ed buyers keep putting my dollars behind it. People that's why they love this stupid stuff, including it me. Just se- it just seems so counterintuitive as something that would provide you quality entertainment, but I don't think, it, it's two schools of thought. It's not quality entertainment. It's just some sort of entertainment. This is coming from a guy who is how old and is going to be going to Disney World uh, okay. on his own. That, well, not on his bit. own, but with... On his own. I don't mean... I mean, like, willingly, like, you know, <laughs> all, all, none of this, you know, willy-nilly stuff. I don't mean it like that, but... So, I, it, it, and, and I get that a decent amount, but there is... Um, there's there's no shame there uh, because I... Because you're so, entertained, because you love it. That's the same thing about 90 Day Fiance. You get hooked on it. You get addicted yes. to it. I'm not one to judge about the whole... Disney totally. World thing because I no, totally no. agree. And and because for for the purposes of like me, like there was a time in my life where I de- genuinely wanted to be an Imagineer who are the people that create these experiences and these parks yeah. for people because there's a level of creativity to it. And it's not just a level of creativity, but it's creativity done in a way that is unmatched by any other organization on the planet, right? They just do things yeah, to do. the nines with the way things are thought through and the attention to detail. So the fandom really stems from the respect that I have for the storytelling and the creativity and just the quality that all stems from Walt Disney wanting to create something that was just unmatched by any other entertainment experience. So um, that's kind of 
Yeah, that's why at 30 years old, I still call myself a, a fan and will continue to do so. I'm just messing with you. Here's the thing. I've had a lot of coffee. I'm blacking out <laughs> after eating this ghost chili pepper donut sort of thing. Just like the room is shaking. I can't think of what's going on. I'm going to well, blame uh, it on that. So that's why I made that joke on you. Do we need to pause the show? Because if you're if you're shaking, then I think we may have... Uh, no, I'm shaking in a good way. I'm ready to rock and roll. I feel like I could run a marathon right now after all this caffeine that I've been having. I'm mildly concerned about you. No, nah, don't be worried about me. Um, speaking of Disney World, <laughs> uh, I would like to put your Disney knowledge to the test with some okay. questions. Because all right. one thing that I discovered here in the last day or so, you want to hear something crazy? Something you probably yeah. had no idea about. You ready for this? You ready for this this is going I'm to ready. quite literally blow your mind did you know <laughs> did you know that disneyland is technically considered the birth place of doritos yes oh come on you had no idea no i did you really had an idea of that you knew that yes so it was um, tried to was a, stump you. Holy cow! You know a lot. No, so there was because uh, I think it was like a Mexican restaurant or something. Yeah, it was that, a Mexican restaurant. Yeah, in Disneyland, and and they had like I forget if it was like Frito Lay was coming to the park or something, and they wanted to impress them with like a new offering, and they basically said like they were talking to the chef. And I could be totally butchering the story, but it was basically somebody in the Disney food and beverage department asked the chef to cook up something new. And he basically took cheese, dried cheese, put it up in a blender, threw it on tortilla chips, and there you have Doritos. You son of a gun. You are sharp. Nothing gets by you. Nothing gets... Hey. Wow. No, don't... Don't... Don't second guess my I'm Disney impressed. No, man. I'm impressed. Okay, so let's go through some questions here. Okay. I've got five questions here. Most of them are very off the wall, much like myself. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So we will put your Disney knowledge to the test to see just how much you know about your one of your favorite places in the absolute uh, in, in, the, in the world, okay? All right, let's do it. All right, first question. What do you got? First question for you. How far apart are trash cans at Disney World? Uh, in terms of like the actual uh, is no more than 10 feet between one another it says that there's uh, it says in order to keep the park clean Imagineers designed Walt Disney World so that no guest is ever more than 30 steps away from the nearest trash can yeah I knew it was something like that you're kind of close though, so I'm going to give it to you just because why not and, and you'll actually notice that in the park too, like they because it's actually when you're trained as a cast member there, you could get into pretty deep trouble if you consciously walk past a piece of trash and don't pick it up. Really? Yeah, that is like very much ingrained in their training process. Okay, moving on, moving on. Second question. Okay. There's an item that Disney does not sell anywhere inside the park. Chewing gum. It is. It's a messy item, and it's called gum. Chewing gum. You also can't find it at the Orlando airport. What? In for the, that reason. How did you know that? Because it's, again, the upkeep and the maintenance of the park and the cleanliness. They, Because what do you do with gum when you're done with it? You throw if it away like a normal person, like a well-behaved in, individual. Right, but not when you have some of the people who choose to traipse through the Walt Disney World. You're, you're going to be finding it on on attraction seats and park benches. Yeah. And... Wow. Okay. All right. So I'm going <laughs> to give it to you. Two for two. Okay. Okay. Next question. Third one here. I will give this to you within within 100. Okay. The number 100. There are approximately how many animals that reside at the Animal Kingdom? Ooh. That's a good question. Um... Twenty five hundred? No, seventeen hundred. Two hundred and fifty different species though. Yeah, that seems about right. 
That's a good question. I, I, it's a, it was a pretty difficult one. I'll give this yeah. one to you. Price is right style. Okay. Just don't go over, okay? Okay. This is also a very tough one. How many Disney World Resort rooms are there? Oh, uh... Is it like 13,000? No. But your no. price is right. You didn't You didn't mess I didn't it up. go over, but... <laughs> 30,843. That many? Oh, man. That's what they say. Oh, yeah. Well, I guess you you have thousands just east, at least in one resort. Here's one you're not going to get. Well, you're I'm just two for two. I'm two and gonna, two, so. Well, I'm, no, I'm going to give that one to you. Price is right style. You didn't go okay. over, so you're three and one. So you've won the game. You you technically have won the game. Best of five, you won the game. Congratulations. Okay. Great. Last one. Walt, or the, not Walt. <laughs> What were Walt Disney's last words? Ooh. Do you know? That's a that's just such a sad question. I probably like haven't actively sought out that answer. Um I don't know. Do you want a hint? Yeah. All right, I'll give it to you. It involved a person. Involved a person. I feel I, I must have heard this at some point, but I just I'm just forgetting. Time what is, is it? ticking. All right, there you go. A lifelong smoker. Yeah. Walt Disney died of lung cancer in 1966. His last words were Kurt Russell. Oh, yeah. A reference to the actor who had just signed a 10 year contract to star in Disney movies. Yes, that's. You knew that? Yep. No, I, I, I did hear that at some point. Yeah. Yep. How in the world do you know half of this stuff? Oh, I, I, that's not really, I guess it's a little more. Here, pick, pick, pick another one from, I want, I want to end on a high note. All right. What is the largest pavilion in Epcot? Ooh, uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. largest pavilion in Epcot. Is it? Is it America? Not America. China? It says it's called the land. Oh, and it's, oh, those pavilions. I'm thinking the world, the world showcase know. pavilions. I don't know. So, All right, let me let me give you another one. That's okay. fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Which Epcot pavilion is totally energy independent? Oh, this is an old. Uh, Well, it's the, the, the Energy Pavilion, but that is not there anymore. Universe of Energy. Universe of Energy. Yeah, it used to be a traction with Ellen DeGeneres. So what you're telling me is that these outdated questions are uh, not up to speed, not up to par. They are now making that pavilion into a Guardians of the Galaxy themed roller coaster. Here's, here's one. Here's one for you. Which section of the Magic Kingdom has no bathrooms? Um... Not Main Street USA. You're doing a lot of thinking here. Here I was I thinking that you're a Disney guru. Yeah, I'm, I'm a little disappointed in myself, to be honest. Uh, Do you want the answer? No. Oh, uh, Fantasyland. Nope, Liberty Square. Liberty Square. I, you always forget about that man, one. Man, man, Damn. Oh, man. Okay, I, come on. I need to end on a. I need to end on a high note. All right, this is the last one. This okay. is the last one. All right. Which? I, I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it to you this way. Which okay. state? And if you know this, uh, the town, that's fine as well. But which state served as inspiration for Magic Kingdom's Main Street USA? Marceline, Missouri. Okay. See, there you go. Now you, you knew the city and the, the yeah. Son of Walt's Walt's hometown. Is that what that is? Yeah. 
or uh, a way either he was born there or it's a connection to his family. He grew up, I think, most of his childhood in Los Angeles. But um, yeah, it is draw- drawn from turn of the century middle America town. That's, that's absurd. That's absurd. I feel like we're just a walking billboard for the mouse right now. A little bit, yeah. I just feel like, because here's the thing. What people don't know is that next week, they're going to get to hear all about your experiences at Walt Disney World. Yes. And they're going to get to experience Zensky drinking around the world at Epcot, which is something I've never done before, something I've always wanted to do here. Well, really, the last five years I've wanted to do it. But we're going to have a little fun on next week's episode and you're going to see just how much it takes to drink around the world before you're, you know, having a good time that. And so there will be sound clips. There will be uh, videos on our Instagram and Facebook. So if you're not following us, go check us out at to the weekend podcast. Uh, We'll be, I I'm also trying to figure out like, and trying to experience, obviously we'll be experiencing what it's like traveling through an airport and on yeah, during an a airplane pandemic. during a pandemic. Yeah. So if you want a little bit of humor in this, what feels like a very out of place situation, tune in and uh, yeah, more to come on next week's show. But in the meantime, follow us on social media for some updates. And make sure you rate, subscribe, and review wherever you get your podcasts. Also make sure you check us out on YouTube as well. That is right. Look, I just hope you have the most delightful time in the magical world of the mouse. Thank you, sir. And and we'll actually be recording at next week's show when I'm fresh off the plane. So the, the feedback you'll be getting is real time. So I'm excited to tell you all about it. Can't It'll wait. It'll be a good time. Hey, have a fun time. Seriously. Be safe. Thank you, buddy. Be well. Thank you. And as always, stay classy, my friend. You stay classy, my friend. See you. Peace. Peace.